What's happening, guys? Um, I have two bows in the back seat right now, a brand new sight, um, new strings and cables waiting for me at the pro shop. We are gonna head down to the pro shop right now, get that all set up, dialed in. I'm gonna take you guys along. My name's Josh Kirshner. This is the road to bow season. This is Grady. You guys know Grady. Time for a uh, flashback. Yeah, a flashback. <laughs> we are at uh, Ross Outdoors right now, and uh, little change plans. Strings and cables did not show. Well, strings and cables did show up, but they sent the wrong size. So we are not doing that today. So we're going to get this new bow, the Omen, all set up and ready to rock. That is not factory packaged because I took it out because I wanted to look at it. It's like doves and rays of light just falling. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like the S2. It's yeah. built. Yeah, likewise, man. That was it. Like that kid in high school who had the souped up Subaru. Like, it's tiny and mighty. Yep. But going up to the EC2, it is like a Cadillac, but you still get the performance when you want it. Grady, uh, why did you draw on my bow with a marker? Um, primarily so that you can have a certain level of self-care to the bow. So I, anything that's a fixed entity, if you will, that is mounted to that bow that has to go into the same place for repeatability, I do witness marks with a silver sharpie, I do it with um, a pencil, anything. There is no way that you're going to tell me oh if my sight gets bumped something isn't going to change so i'm very picky on that i never am going to do marks on like cam timing because this is a PSC. it has pre-machined in marks for that and plus cables can stretch over time which means you're constantly taking them on and off but rest sight um if you're running like a front and a back bar like a lot of people are now, I'm going to take pictures or I'm going to do the marks of the angle that that sidebar's at. That's a big one to me. Um, basically, you're just doing what you would do with a knock set to the rest of the boat. So it makes life a little bit friendlier. This is why Grady works on my stuff. Because <laughs> he's like super particular. <laughs> What are we doing here, Grady? All of the levels. All of them. So, basically, we are getting the bow level so that we can level the sight axes. So, if people, if you think about like leveling a rifle scope on a gun, you have to make the gun level. Then you level the scope to yeah. the bore and all that fun stuff. So here, I am making sure the bow is level forward and back, side to side, so that I have an even playing field. Because now, if we look, just because this one, factory built sight, not everything is going to come perfect. Um, if you were to go out and shoot right now, you're going to have to cant the bow probably, let's see, five degrees to get it to read level. But look at what that would do to the rest of it. It'll be a little bit easier to see with the level on the string. Yep. Oh yeah, that's off. And now, if I bring it back and the vice to where yep. that's what the boat level is, that's not so level. Yep. Um, that one is just where the bow is sitting. And then this is the other fun portion of it. I personally 
don't like putting levels on sight tapes. Kind of weird about that. Um, so right here, I can move this because he hasn't sighted anything in. This moves your housing up and down on that guide with the helix rod in the back. If this whole piece isn't level to this Picatinny mount attaching it to the bow, what will happen is, and I think if you look at the last bow build video Josh did, I kind of explained this a little bit. If I start dialing this, it is going to incrementally move that sight housing out. And you can actually see it when I start moving it right here. If you look at the housing, I'm going to start dialing it and you can see it slowly start moving off to the right because that rod isn't level. So we have to do our first axis, which is leveling that rod to the bow. So yeah, right there. Get a peek at that bubble. She's way off. Mm -hmm. And because Josh isn't that nice, he didn't bring me the little handy dandy wrench set that comes with the site. Oh, dang it. So I'm gonna have to use my own because I too use this site and be able to. Because the one thing in archery is all companies across the whole board, they all love using very, very tiny screws and putting them in very, very inconvenient places. <laughs> so, loosen here, and then I will loosen here. And now I've got full adjustment of this housing. I will hold the level onto that guide rail because I know that's perfectly straight. Bow is level. Now that guide rail is level. tend to kind of go back and forth when doing tension and now we're a tenth of the way there but we go back to our silver sharpie because I know that is level Now, if Humpty Dumpty falls off the wall, he can see where those silver sharpie marks will no longer line up. So if you have to do a quick little in the field repair, because Mr. Kirchner does tend to write books about backpack hunting and go on trips everywhere. So he's not gonna have an archery shop. Like he's not gonna be able to pull me out of his back pocket. So he will be able to do personal in the field care because he's got these marks from what we know is level. All right, so now I believe what Grady's doing Pardon? is he's gonna check third access, is that right? It's more of a guess. Grady, no. Grady's gonna guess third access. No, so third <laughs> access no, is... No coding here. Josie? Let me think. The best way to verbalize Josiah, it. Third axis Grady. is leveling the bow He's a little tied up at for the no an angled shot down or up. So when I draw my bow on flat ground, that's great. Everything can we'll be leveled. Side, if I break at my waist and I have to go down or I have to go up, the angle at which this sight is to my peep and to the riser, if it's not at the right angle, no you're in a lot of trouble because then you're gonna cant the bow. So like earlier yeah. on, if Josh puts the footage in of showing how the bubble level sat when it was flat. The bow right now is level at an angle. Look at that. That means I gotta cant the bow a lot to try to get that level over. And now, then we start really getting into wonky stuff of, oh, hey, I missed eight feet left. Well, this is why. Um, it, I've been there. We've all been there, and a lot of times, 
people, especially nowadays, they blame themselves because that's the thing. Like they'll say, "Oh, I missed. It was just a hard shot." Equipment is too good nowadays to really settle for stuff. Um, even if you're balling on a budget, most sites have first, second, third access now. Especially if you're you got yourself an amazing bow and you're just kind of building up the accessories on it. Make sure you get a sight with third axis would be something that is important to myself personally, because when, even if it's five degrees, but you're shooting at 70 yards, there's a big impact difference because it will vary off. Um, guys shooting at a tree stance, even if it's 30 yards, but it's downhill, it's going to make a difference and it can be, I don't care if it's the difference of, oh, I 12 ringed him through the top of the heart or uh oh, I didn't do my axis and I hit three inches to the right and I caught the back of the shoulder and got no penetration. Because everyone's been there, done that, got the t-shirt when it comes to that and it's no fun. So now, the way the Canyon Pounder's little third axis adjustment is different, um, kind of reminiscent of some older sites that have been around for a while. So it's basically a pivot. And if he shows you from the bottom here, that's kind of the best way to see it is this screw and this screw are what affect everything. I have to take out and take in to get the bubble level. So it is on the right side. So I am taking out the left screw and then I'm sinking down that right screw. Sometimes when you're doing axes, you gotta give the bubble a little bit of a love tap so that she's willing to react what you're doing otherwise nothing will happen and then you'll be super confused there ta-da and now we know if Josh misses it's his fault <laughs> Oh, great. Uh, we got all of the stuff on the bow. What are we doing now? Paper tune. We're going to sure. do a paper tune. Okay. Everything's flying relatively straight, so my previous statement can reign true that if Josh misses, it is completely his fault. Right. Just, we're just trying to make me look bad here. Well, I can't make myself look bad. That's not how this works. <laughs> it can only be you. All right, so this is where we're starting, right here, okay? And before we do anything, everything is center shot right now. So the arrow is level and it is centered on the riser. Okay. So we're again gonna blame this on Josh's lack of shooting abilities. Yes. Because I know I did my job. Yep. That's a horrible terror for him to throw. I'm just not, just not dialed in. See what I did that there? was like the easiest dad joke you could have made. I listen. Dialed in. Listen. Chip Page is the dialed in hunter. Listen. That was. I became a dad. Just for and, the jokes or what? And, no, no, no. And just like naturally, the dad jokes have been infused into my everyday life. That's writer problems, Grady. Writer? Yeah. Why? Because we have a right terror or because you write articles? <laughs> <laughs> Who's making dad jokes now? <laughs> it's expected for me. You should ask my guys here. Bryson texted me yesterday and said, I got to make sure I have whatever day off before I pay for a fishing tournament. And I was like, well, if you're going to start paying people, I'm like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we, what are we doing here? Uh, I'm moving the rest a little bit because I'm trying to entertain myself to see if that is going to maybe get the tear a little closer. I'm already expecting that I'm going to have to re-space the cams with that little tool thingy we talked yep. about last time. Yep. But right. we're settling in for a good tune. This is where we started. This is where we're at right now. So, Grady is making another adjustment in there. He's gonna 
put the spacer on the bottom cam as well and move that over and we're going to see what that does. It's so close. Perfect bullet hole. Perfect. Yeah, one like, nice. Probably hit an insert. Yeah, you hit an insert. Oh, really? Yeah. I hope that's in focus, but there was an insert in the target. <laughs> and I hit it. That's what that loud noise was. We've, we got a bullet hole now, though, so we're good. All right, Grady. So hmm. we got a bullet hole. Now what are we going to do? So, fast forwarding to where we are now, we got the bullet hole. I know my knocks, or knock height is correct, everything's good. So we went in, tied a quick knock set, got the D loop cinched down to where that's not gonna change so that if we ever need to put on a new loop, he knows exactly where to do it. And there's no knock pinch, so I have about 19,000, so one serving strand of space in there so that when it comes back, it doesn't pinch. Now we're gonna get peep height. Most Individuals on peep height are somewhere between five and three quarters inches and six and an eighth inches tall from center of knocking point to the peep. It depends on how big your nose is, really. Like face, shape, everything. Guys, that's why I can't shoot some people's bows and some people can come in and be like, oh my gosh, you have a horrible peep height. Like Ross, the owner, his peep height is like seven and a half inches. It's just how it ends up the main thing is you do not adjust yourself to the bow when you take the bow to a shop it's not just oh your peeps in it here you go it is peeps in it now you have to check it we move it up and down we get it to where when you draw back and you naturally come into your anchor point whatever that may be and I settle I want that peep to immediately fall into my line of sight I don't want to have to raise my head press my head none of that when I'm setting peep height I will get it to the right height and then I will drag it down about a serving width the reason I do that is because when you take your bow and I set my peep height at 20 that's great we live in Arizona we tend to shoot stuff far now I just drop my sight housing a ton so my peep height is gonna seem oddly high when I come in and my housing's that low. So for me, I will drag it down about a 16th of an inch. Just seems to be kind of a quick and easy way to cheat the system if you do 10 shooting long distance. Um, if you shoot uh, extreme angles often, I would check my peep out of the tree stand or wherever, um, peep size. You gotta plan for realistic stuff if you shoot out of ground blinds a lot you may end up having to go with a bigger peep so that allows more light to come in. So, oh, hey, I don't put a eighth inch peep in because it feels so wonderful when I'm in a perfectly lit range. And then all of a sudden I get my ground blind and I can't see anything. So we have to plan for the practical applications of everything. And again, the equipment's too good nowadays to settle. You have to, you have to expect perfection out of your stuff. And that's what we strive for here is every bow that goes out, we would deem within a certain scale of perfect. Okay, so right now Josh is coming in, he's come to his anchor points, he is touching the tip of his nose to the string, and he has shut his eyes, so as soon as he opens, tiny he's going to be able to tell if it's too high or too low. Tiny bit low. Tiny bit low. Just a tiny bit. So, now he's going to let down with the amazing Revolve Cam system. Let off, I'm going to slide this up just a skosh, and he's going to try it again. And yes, skosh is a technical term. Yes. <laughs> Somewhere between a 32nd and a 16th of an inch, generally. And we're repeating the process. Perfect. We got the dialed in Hunter, a dialed in P pipe. Okay. Ta da. <laughs> what are you doing now, Grady? Aligning the single for the option pin with the rest of the housing because if I don't line that up 
top second fourth and fifth pin are going to be on the money and then all of a sudden the option pin so the third pin when you flick it out of the way it's going to be right or left so you have to use that little set screw guy and then you loosen that and then it allows you to slide back and forth and it's on a little machine track right there so you don't have the vertical slop so you're not going to lose sight in but you'll have to mess with your elevation a little bit but now she done sweet all right guys so uh got the bow all set up shooting bullet holes uh, everything's tied in, knock set, peep is in. Now, uh, just for just for giggles, just to see what this thing is pushing, we're gonna throw it through the chrono. Uh, if I, my memory serves me correctly, the arrow is 478 grains. Uh, poundage is at 65 pounds, and it is at 29 inches and 80% let off. So let's see what happens. Two seventy five. Pretty dang quick. We're gonna shoot it a couple more times to see if it keeps repeating that. All right, there you go, 276. Thing is moving and I cannot wait to get this thing in the field.